Okay, we're now at uh, section 16.8. Uh, that is capacitors with dielectrics. Uh, let's bring up the PowerPoint. Let's move this off to the side. Um, okay, a dielectric is an insulating material, for example, rubber, plastic, or wax paper. When a dielectric is inserted between the plates of a capacitor, the capacitance increases. If the dielectric completely fills the space between the plates, the capacitance is multiplied by the factor kappa, called the dielectric constant. Let's imagine a parallel plate capacitor of charge Q sub zero and capacitance C sub zero with no dielectric. The potential difference across the capacitor pl plates can be measured as with the figure on the left. Because the capacitor is not connected to an external circuit, there is no pathway for charge to leave or be added to the plates. If a dielectric is now inserted between the plates as in the figure on the right, the voltage across the plates is reduced by the factor kappa. The new voltage is shown in the equation. Because kappa is greater than one, delta V is less than delta V zero, the voltage across the capacitor without the dielectric. Because the charge Q sub zero on the capacitor doesn't change, we can conclude that, that the capacitance in the presence of the dielectric must change. The capacitance is then given by this relationship. Oh, where is the relationship? It's, I guess it's the delta V equals delta V sub zero divided by kappa. Uh, there was no, okay. Now, for a parallel plate capacitor with a capacitance in the absence of a dielectric as C sub zero, we can express the capacitance in the presence of a dielectric as shown. From this result, you might think that the capacitance could be made very large by decreasing D, the separation between the plates. In practice, the lowest value of D is limited by the electrical discharge that can occur through the dielectric material separ separating the plates. For any given plate separation, there is a maximum electric field that can be produced in the dielectric before it breaks down and begins to conduct. The maximum electric field is called the dielectric strength, and for air, its value is about three times 10 to the sixth volts per meter. Most insulating materials have dielectric strengths greater than that of air, as you can see from the table. Uh, This photo shows the, the dielectric breakdown of air. Sparks are produced when a large alternating voltage is applied across the wires by a high voltage induction co coil power supply. Commercial capacitors are often made by using metal foil interlaced with thin sheets of paraffin impregnated paper or mylar, which serves as the dielectric material. Alternating layers of metal foil and dielectric are rolled into a small cylinder, as you can see in the figure on the left. One, one type of high voltage capacitor consists of a number of interwoven metal plates immersed in silicon oil, as shown in the middle figure. Small capacitors are often constructed from ceramic materials. Variable capacitors, typically 10 picofarads to 500 picofarads, usually consist of two interwoven sets of metal plates, one fixed and the other movable, with air as the dielectric. An electrolytic capacitor, shown in the figure on the right, is often used to store large amounts of, of charge at relatively low voltages. It consists of a metal foil in contact with an electrolyte, a solution that conducts, conducts charge by virtue of the motion of the ions contained in it. When a voltage is applied between the foil and the electrolyte, a thin layer of metal oxide, an insulator, is formed on the foil and this layer serves as the dielectric. Enormous capacitances can be obtained because the dielectric layer is very thin. The left-hand figure shows a variety of commercially available com capacitors. The right-hand figure is a variable capacitor. Variable capacitors are used in radios and ad adjust the frequency. And what you have is you have the areas of the plates increasing as you get, uh, if those plates are moved out of position, 
you have very low capacitance. As you bring the plates closer and closer together, you increase the capacitance. Uh, okay. That ends this section. The next section we'll cover is a subsection, a subsection of 16.81, an atomic description of dielectrics.